I've said before that the musical material you're working with doesn't really matter. It's what you do with it that counts. To prove that point, I asked six composers from around the world to take the Song of Time from the Legend of Zelda series and make it their own. What we ended up with was six drastically different pieces of music, but all of them containing that same recognizable theme at their core. Quick refresher, this is the Song of Time that all six composers were working with. To start us off, we have Alex Christodoulou, who took a solemn and respectful approach. Next is Arald Vonvik, who also shared a video explaining his writing process. Hey guys, my name is Arald, and today I'm going to show you how we used this iconic theme from the Zelda games and adapted it to the incredible soundscape that Hans Zimmer created for the Dune movies. So I had two goals for this piece. Uh, one was to make the Song of Time theme recognizable but still give it an interesting twist, and two, to make the listener feel like this piece is firmly placed in the Dune universe. So the first motif I chose was the anti-groove, as Hans Zimmer calls it, uh, and the second motif was the music playing as Paul has these dreamy, silky visions of Johnny, and the third motif I knew that just had to be uh, the worm ride, because yeah, that scene just has incredible music, and I figured that would be a proper climax to the song. And also, throughout the entire track, I knew that I wanted to convey the same idea that Hans Zimmer and Denis Villeneuve had when they were making the music for Dune, which was to incorporate the female voice to represent the strong and important female characters in the plot. 
So coming back to that first goal, which was to make sure that uh, the Song of Time theme was uh, recognizable in the piece. When I was picking these motifs from Dune, I was always trying to uh, have that Song of Time theme in mind. Uh, would it fit and how would I make it fit? So pretty early on in the process, I tried to land on which lead instruments to use. The instrument choices had to support, you know, the idea of uh, uniting uh, Zelda and Dune musically. So I chose uh, the most well-known instrument there is uh, from the Zelda series, which is obviously the ocarina. And from the um, Dune, I chose the Duduk. And luckily, these two instruments just blend perfectly together, making this um, very soothing sound, which I'll show you right now. Uh, now let's take a look at the anti-groove, uh, which appears several times uh, during this track. The first appearance is probably the clearest one, and it sounds uh, like this. Alright, that's as far as I've had the time to take you through this track. Hope you enjoy.
Now we have an arrangement by Jacob de Graaf, who gives us a great demonstration of how powerful recording real human voices can be. Next, we have Jeff Helkema, who also shared a video explaining his approach to the composition. Hi, welcome to this breakdown of Mazella's Talent Swap. Let me show you how I first started this piece by creating a melodic chain, a chain that exists of the original theme that I transposed to E flat Dorian, and then I made two variations. Next to that, I made some little motifs out of the red squared intervals that you see here. Now let me show you how I worked that out in the piece. I've soloed the melodic instruments and just a few bass and harmony tracks. The melodic chain starts off with this Zangu solo that plays the last measure of the original theme. That is answered by an interval, this first interval. That is answered by the Gzau that plays a motive based on these intervals answered by this last interval F E flat and that is answered by this ocarina motive that is a variation on the Gzau motive. Here we are at build up 2 where I introduce these melodic phrases that are kind of a voice for Zelda and it's accompanied by the Zongu solo playing variation 1 and that is doubled by the ocarina. So here we are at interlude 1 where I introduce variation 2. First played by the guitar plucks and then in the pre-climax played by the Yulian pipes with a counter voice with a counter melody of the Zongu and doubled by the ocarina again. So here we finally are at climax 1 where I introduce the original theme. And then there's the outro or I'm using some motives that I used in Build Up 2 also. I realize this breakdown doesn't cover the whole piece, but feel free to ask me any questions down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.
William Rader took a drastically different approach and imagined the Song of Time in a 1960s Latin jazz vibe, something straight out of Mad Men. Finally, we have Victor Chouet, who also did an arrangement that is completely unlike any of the others. Thank you so much everyone for contributing to this video, and thank you for watching all the way to the end. Some of you may recognize these names. They were all past winners of our composing competitions. It was really fun to get to connect with these composers again. I hope you enjoyed listening to their unique takes on the Song of Time as much as I did. If you're hungry for more style swaps, I've got you covered with this video right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.